So we'll spend some time talking about uh, the syllabus. We'll spend some time talking about uh, the deliverables for the class, which are embedded in the syllabus. And maybe we'll talk about motivation. We've already talked about motivation a little bit already. Um, I invited, uh, on, the, on your syllabus that you have, which we'll go through, I invited the three TAs to join us today, so at least you can see them. And so you'll be able to hunt them down. Uh, the first is uh, Sheng Ji. Sheng. Sheng is right at the back here. So his office is in 230A, which is right next door to my office in Hustler. Um, and so he's kind of the coordinating TA. And uh, also uh, from the cl this class last year, we have two TAs. We have uh, Dylan Dumoulin, uh who's here, who did very well in this class, and also drinks beer at Bill Pickles, which is where he landed his job. Uh, actually, as it turns out, I seem to remember some late day in, uh, thanks Dylan, and uh, Meng Fan Liu. Is Meng Fan here? Meng Fan is right at the back. So Dylan and Meng Fan both took this class last year. They're undergraduate TAs. They work for 10 hours. Uh, on your syllabus, the hours for Dylan are already on there. It'll be, I think, in the, uh, the EME uh, study room, which is uh, 111 Hostler. And uh, Meng Fan will set his uh, hours as soon as, uh, as we get, um, uh, he gets his courses straightened out. Um, so, I think um, Dylan is an uh, energy engineer, and Meng Fan is uh, an IUG uh, environmental systems engineer. And um, uh, Zheng Ji is a uh, PhD student in, in, our, in our department, energy and mineral engineering. So, so if you guys, uh, now you've been recognized, uh, I should probably give you a round of applause, but I don't think you need that. Uh, if you want to, to leave, you're welcome to, and if you want to stay, you're, you're also welcome to do the same. Okay, um, today I just want to, to go through uh, the syllabus, uh, which will be the first thing. Um, I guess I made the point that uh, all of the material is online. Um, the class is kind of a blended class. Some of it is in class here. Some of it is online, served with material. Can you see that, by the way? How does that come up? Small, large, as a back. Make that, can you see that? You can say no if you can't, it's okay. You won't upset me. Because I have the technology to make it bigger. So, sorry. So if you're here in Sparks, um, you already know uh, that we're here. You know where it should be. Um, there is a textbook for the class. Uh, first of all, maybe I'll just say, who have people been using Canvas already in this class, class semesters? Yes, yeah. some, all. You're probably more. If you, if it's all, then you're more uh, familiar than I. Um, I guess. Uh, so everything should be on. So all the materials you need are split between two locations. One is Canvas. Oh, I'm surprised. Didn't need to use dual factor authentication. Um, all the materials that you need are either on Canvas or they are on the course website. And so for me, the easiest way to find that website is look for me on Google. And this is the address that's in your syllabus. And you'll see that all the materials that you, most of the public materials that you need, but by the way, you don't have to pay Course Hero to get them, uh, uh, are available to you. Uh, the Course Notes is this 53 megabyte package, which we will use for the individual classes. So if you've looked at that already, you'll be able to download that to your account. Uh, it includes the rubric for the assignment we've talked about and the examples we'll go through today. It includes uh, an equation sheet, which includes everything that you'd ever, it might be scary right now, but believe me, you'll understand hopefully some of this. And it will talk about the, good, sense of humor. And uh, it'll talk about some of the things that we'll get into as we go through this. So I'm not trying to give you whiplash, but you'll see this is the, the stock that we'll use for the, uh, the main program, uh, the main course. The stats are, uh, you can look at, uh, you'll see that maybe 20% uh, of the class historically over the last 
three, four years have got a D or an F uh, for the class. If you need a, a C or better, then use that as your motivation. Um, we'll talk about the grading soon enough. And you'll also realize that most of these, the material that we talk about, for instance, this lecture from last year, uh, is served to you on YouTube. So you could have avoided coming here if you really wanted to, but yeah, you don't want to do that. This is an explosion that happened in Tianjin in, uh, in China last, uh, this time last year. So something topical at the time. Topical because combustion, of course, is a fluid mechanics problem with a bit of chemical reaction thermodynamics in it. This is a, uh, a dock side, a warehouse at the dock, which was illegally uh, storing calcium, the, the, the product for acetylene, I believe. So many of the things are served up to you on this website, including um, reviews for the exams. And so it's arranged so that the material for exam midterm one happens uh, before that. It includes the first three weeks plus uh, the first lecture of the, s the fourth week, which is what this notation here is. If you, you lost it? That's kind of interesting. All right. All right. And so if you can't see that, so this is uh, the materials online. And so those are the materials that you have available to you. Um, the other materials, whoops, don't want to see that. It's too shocking. The other material that you uh, have available to you, I guess, is under assignments. And so You'll see that in the course of this class, um, there are a number of deliberal, deliverables identified in the, the syllabus. Um, and we'll talk about those in due course. All right. So I, I'm just going to work, so I'm not confusing anybody, including myself. I'll just work through the syllabus in kind of uh, chronological order. I sent uh, an email message mentioning about the textbook. Um, there is a textbook for the class. Uh, you can get it in two, two modes. You can pick it up in the bookstore, which is uh, the textbook, which is McGraw-Hill, Okishi. It used to be this title, but now I think it might be called Okishi's Fluid Mechanics uh, or something like that. And you can buy it in the bookstore as a physical hard copy. It is the same book that you'd buy the eighth edition but it has maybe the final chapters on compressible flows and turbo machinery locked out, which allows them to sell it to you more cheaply. I think it's an $80, $80 book, which is may seem like a lot, but it's not very much because I think it's a $150 book if you buy the, uh, the fancy edition. I think it might be black and white. Did anyone pick it up already? Is it black and white in this printed version? Again, no response. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, um, but anyway, so that's the book. You can also get a non-expiring e-copy by buying it online from this address here, should you so wish. Um, and it's up to you as to whether you buy it or not. Um, the reason I uh, advised you maybe to come to class before doing that is that the assignments that you do, which will be weekly assignments, which go with the um, material here, are actually assignments from the 7th edition, not the 8th edition, which is the one you'll buy. And so to get around that problem, which I think is an advantage for you, maybe a disadvantage for the public publishing house, is that these assignments are available to you online. I don't know if this is downloading them. It should be downloading them. Yeah, so, so in other words, you can access those. So the Questions in your book are not the ones you need to do, okay? And these these are the um, the questions from the the seventh seventh edition. And so I see. So the reason for doing that is that they, you know, part of the uh, economics of uh, textbook publishing, I think, is that you come out with a new edition every little while. You change the questions around. You add new services. So we could have you do these services. You know, pay the extra whatever it is to do these questions online with Wiley and have them send the scores, uh, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it uh, self-contained within this class. So this is a compromise. You can download those assignments, and I encourage you to do that. And so homework one will be due typically 
midnight on Thursday after the week where we cover the class. So week one, this week, we'll cover the material for uh, homework one. Uh, so those will be due, as in the email, I think, a week Thursday at midnight. Um, the time is absolute. Uh, it'll probably be 2 o'clock in the morning so that you can come home after Thirsty Thursday and uh, get them completed, of course, flawlessly. And um, no, we do that because it's just a convenience to us. We know that if we put it at midnight, oh, I started at 11 o'clock, but I didn't quite get them done. So they're done. Once they're done and closed, they're, they're closed. They're not opened up again. And so any time after the Friday of the previous week, you should be well able to be well able to do them. You should have the tools available to, to do them. And so um, those are the assignments. The assignments are completed online. Uh, I don't know if it'll, this will work for me. They are now live for the first one. They will look something like this. <coughs> don't know what the questions are, but I can certainly give answers. Let's go down through the Bs and see if that's the special key here. Hopefully it isn't, because <laughs> then we'll have to change it for you, but, um, unless you rush to do it straight away. So I don't know how many questions there are. There's, they're all from this uh, downloaded, I guess there are at least 12. I guess there are 13. So what will it tell me? It's not telling me anything. OK, that's surprising. Uh, maybe it doesn't work because I, I, oh, yeah, it does. OK. So it tells you incorrect or, or correct, but it doesn't give you which ones are correct. So you can do it the second time. So you get three attempts. You have unlimited time. Um, don't game the system. It's not worth it. You need to have this knowledge to be able to do it. Certainly, you can probably find these answers somewhere uh, available from someone. Uh, you can even do it in groups. I know how you can game the system. I'm not stupid enough to realize that that can't happen, but uh, you shouldn't. Uh, and so... So these things are delivered online and automated. You get three chances. Uh, you get the highest score of the three. Um, and you can't, you're probably not, you might be ready to do these right now, but officially we won't have the material done until uh, the end of this week. On Friday, we, we will be done, ready for that. So uh, we have that material on, on Canvas, okay? So it doesn't like that. What else do we have on Canvas? If we go back to uh, assignments, so 15% of the grade is based on these assignments. So basically one a week, so 1% per assignment. And they'll come live typically on the Friday after class, when we've had class, and uh, they will go dark on Friday the following Friday at 2 o'clock in the morning, typically. But don't take it as 2. Take it as midnight on the Thursday. Uh, and you need to get them done that. So if you do have a problem as like a death in the family or something really tragic, then, of course, we will do it. But for, for getting back late after Thursday, Thursday, you better get a better excuse than that. Um, for the class, parts of the class which are in uh, online, there are quizzes. Uh, and those are present online as well. They're not um, live yet. You'll see that 9-2 is week 9-2. It doesn't matter. These are just from the past uh, uh, material. And those are quizzes re relative to the, the YouTube material which is served up to you. So, so that's the, uh, what you'll do, do those on. Group presentations we'll talk about in due course. Um, uh, that's the last two pages in your syllabus, if you like. And so that's 10% of your grade. You'll get to do a group presentation uh, in the class. And the other thing, the most important thing, if you're only going to look, remember one thing today, remember that the exams are 75% of the grade. The exams, if you can ace the homework questions, is not a necessary requirement condition that you will necessarily ace the exams. And so I would encourage you today, uh, and I'll ask you on Wednesday, if you have yet downloaded the prior exams from 2009 onwards. And 
if you have downloaded them, I guess it's downloading them now. I downloaded them last night in case I needed a backup. But I guess exam, well, exams, which is on my desktop, will be just, well, I can do this. Let's take one for example, um, solution. So this was the exam from last year. Um, yeah, 2015, end of September, a month from now. And so present on this site are the exams and their solutions for the last, I guess, uh, six years, right? 2009 to 2015. So I would encourage you to look at those today. Don't let it get away from you and see how comfortable uh, you are with them. If you can ace them, then that's great. That should set a nice comfort level for you that you'll be happy with, you might choose to, to, to do whatever, to, to sleep in in the mornings, whatever, it's up to you. But if you can't, then, um, then uh, make sure that you resolve to engage in the class. I say that because I say this every year, and the first exam is always a bloodbath, always. So I, I hear that, I, I saw some heads come up, <laughs> always. And so I admonish the class to not lose focus before the first exam because I would say, I've never looked at it statistically, but I'd say that doing well on the first exam is a good arbiter of whether you might do well in this class. It takes all the heat off. If you get a lead on the first exam, then you're going to feel real comfortable. And so I will ask you on uh, Wednesday whether you've looked at the exams or not for the first uh, midterm. And... Um, I'll just ask you, and now it's just a reminder. But you have to be responsible for it. And so I think, I don't know what to, to do other than make that statement. You heard the word bloodbath. Remember that word bloodbath. And I've said it for four years, and I don't think it's changed. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know what else to do about it. So it's not a threat or a scare. It's just a reality. And so I, I don't know how to, to otherwise deal with that. So Canvas has the material served up on it. It has the exams. It has the assignments from the seventh edition. It has um, the homework uh, material will be submitted on that uh, on that website, and it will also have the quizzes, which are for the online material when we don't meet in this classroom. What? <laughs> All right. So. Um, the online resources, uh, this is the course website that we've just looked at, which has the syllabus and other things on it. In years past, I've broadcast these things on Acrobat, whatever it is, and I didn't set that up today. I, it's usually, I can see one or two people there, and I, I don't know whether I'll do that this year or not. I don't think it's very fruitful. We record the uh, classes. This class will be put online before <coughs> noon, typically, and so, you know, the utility of utility or futility, I'm not sure which, of having it broadcast live, uh, I, d I don't know there's much utility for that. And so I think I probably won't do that this year. The prerequisites are Math 250 and 251, uh, which makes sense. Uh, they would both include differential equations. We don't really solve very many differential equations in this class, but you should know Newton's second law, F equals MA. Dynamics should be the appropriate um, prerequisite for this, but sure as hell, uh, electricity and magnetism is irrelevant for this, so I don't know why this is here. But. <laughs> and so you won't get kicked out of this class if you don't know how, how a magnet works. But um, I think that I've asked for this to be changed for three, four years, and I think it's on the verge of being changed. The class should be, it may have ended up being this because EMEC 212, or what used to be EMEC 12, was dynamics, which really is the class that you need. So the only expression you need from that to understand is this. Uh, because it governs everything uh, that this class is about in terms of the dynamics of fluids, the motion of fluids. In the same way you can use that to represent a ball that I might throw at the wall and would bounce off, it's also, you can think of that ball as a packet of water, which travels with, not surprisingly, exactly the same rules. Um, the grading. Uh, the grading, uh, you'll see here, you can add those up. They come up to more than 100%, as you might see, which is good for you. There are about 13 weeks of uh, assignments. There's not one in the last week uh, because, well, just so you're getting ready for the final. 
There's a group presentation, which is worth 10%. You'll work with, uh, we'll probably have 60 groups. This is a class of 290 souls. Uh, and so we'll assign groups of probably five people. And you work on a group assignment that we'll talk about uh, in a little while. There are three midterms. Uh, the midterms are each worth 15%. The midterm dates are already prescribed, and they're on here. Or if you're a visual learner, you can look on this thing here, and it's, it's these. So September the 21st, October the 19th, <coughs> November the 9th, and uh, finals week, which is the 12th to the 16th. So uh, we've done this over the last few years, and I think it's worked well. We have an evening exam, Wednesday evening exam. Uh, it's at 8 o'clock. Uh, we have the room as, lo as long as we want, so we go until midnight if people want to use it. It's nominally a two-hour exam, but people, if they want to sh show their stuff, can stay as long as they wish to do it. It's fair. Certainly, if you don't know how to do it, then having extra time doesn't help you. But if you do know how to do stuff, I think having extra time does help you. We'll have a review session in classes before that. Uh, I think this year, just because the way we'll do it, I think we'll do it in class rather than out of class. So it's Friday morning, not thirsty Friday, that you'll have to give up for that. Um, and if you are very thirsty, uh, don't get, yeah, don't assuage your first too much. Engage in the class, as I've uh, mentioned uh, a couple times. Right. The midterms, uh, if you look at the exam scripts, are scored out of 330 points, which then translates to 110%. And so the top scorer, the, the only curve that exists in this class, is if someone on the first exam scores 102%, then we'll add 8% to everyone's score to bring that person's score up to 110 and uh, everyone else is up by 8%. Um, I think that works well for us. It gives you a bonus. It means you get 110% maximum for your exam. So that instead of this being both for midterms and the finals, so in other words, this 75%, really, you could score 110% on. So it's really not 75%, but it would be 82.5%, uh, if that's right, uh, that contributes to this grade. So that's uh, is helpful. Not because I'm particularly charitable. Um, I am charitable, actually. Uh, but um, I think it uh, allows the students who are uh, putting time in and doing well to be able to build a bit of a buffer. And for students who kind of blow it off and don't do very well, then that doesn't help them very much. And so, so I, 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 to me, that's part of the, the whole boundaries of this class is to, to be able to say exactly what we do. We've always done that. We've done that for the last three years. Um, uh, and I don't see any reason to, to not continue. We will do that for both finals and midterms. So look at the proportions here that 75% of the grade, actually, actually more than 75% of the grade, is going to be based on exams. Uh, and so realize that. It's a shame for people who get nervous at exams. It has to be that way. It's the only way that we can guarantee that the work that you're doing is your own, period. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's exactly why it is. And um, so, so have a look at the exams. That's probably the third time I've mentioned that. The other thing that we do is that for the online stuff, in addition to the 100%, which is this 7% at the bottom, is that for doing these online content quizzes, to show that you've actually listened to the, uh, the stuff on YouTube that's been um, assigned, then it's a third of a point for each one. And so that goes to it. And so that's, you know, as I would say, that's money for old rope. I did come and check the projector last uh, Friday, and it said, I guess I should have called it in, this projector's overheating, so that's the reason that one's out. I will call it in after the end of this. I'm doing all the talking. Any questions, comments? Okay. So I, I didn't mention that my uh, my office is next to Sheng Ji's, or his is next to mine, I'm not sure how to say it. Um, I usually have an open door. Um, since we have about 20 hours worth of uh, TA time expended and also access to Sheng, I, I don't really want to particularly uh, answer questions about is this really the right number I got for question 1.2.1. I think you're probably better off and get better reception from doing that with the TAs. They might be more um, uh, 
um, kind. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I would be happy to speak to people if people want to drop in and say hi and say where you're from and chat because that's great. Having contact with students. It's always, uh, I used to get kind of depressed when classes, you, you might be the same way, but you might get depressed when classes start. But I think it's great when young people come back into town and the whole town lights up again after being kind of in the doldrums for the, the summer. So it's great to chat with students in the, when they come back uh, in an informal way, uh, advice in general uh, life terms. It's nice to know people. You as students, if you think that you might be going to graduate school or going to need a reference from someone, might want to call, color some of the faculty that you have in your classes so that they know you well enough to do it. When I get asked to write references from someone for this class for graduate school, basically if I, I don't know them, I can say, well, uh, Lizzie scored an A in a challenging class, but that's pretty much all I know about her. And that's it. Unless I know you more uh, in more detail than that. And a few students uh, in this class, I can think of two that I've met in this class that I've had in other classes, or one that worked as a TA for this class and one that traveled with us on a course class, both of whom are in graduate school now, and I wrote recommendations for them. I don't know if that helped them or hurt them, but um, they're, they're, one got accepted to Berkeley but decided to go to, um, uh, to Denmark instead, uh, uh, Sweden instead. And so try, you know, instructors aren't a complete pain in the ass. You should talk to them. All right, uh, so the rest of the syllabus um, lays out the things that probably I've talked about. Um, so we've done most of, of this. Uh, again, if you have a question or a comment, you should just shout it out. Um, weekly assignments we've talked about in terms of their timing. They're all on Canvas. Uh, if you're all experts now on Canvas, you know how to do that. Certainly students may work together, but you should submit your own work. As I said, I can certainly imagine ways in which you can gain the system working in a team to be able to figure out what a team of five would game the system quite well, I think, right? Uh, in terms of being able to figure out which are the right answers and the wrong answers, but I don't think you want to do that. No retroactive credit. So the other thing that you should check is that once you've done the assignments, um, that you check that the scores come up for you. And um, because if otherwise, we don't reset it, you know. Sometimes, you know, I get two weeks later, I, I think I did this assignment. You know, Angel, like any kind of electronic system, timestamps everything. So you can go back and see, well, you didn't seem to have logged on for three weeks, so I'm not sure how you did it. Uh, yeah, go so, so, so. Anyway, just the realities of, of life. I remember doing the same thing, dropping off a rental car in Oakland and saying, well, I returned it Saturday night. Said, oh, but sir, I was there Saturday night, and I looked in the parking lot, and I didn't see it. Oh, shit, done Everyone games the system. <coughs> group presentations. You will all get the chance to do a group presentation. It's worth 10% of your grade. Um, I guess the material for it is in the, uh, in the back of your... Uh, this. This is it. Um, the basic idea, uh, it's probably easier for me to show you on what your deliverable will be. It's a very straightforward deliverable. It's kind of laid out here, and along with the time scale of this, we'll assign you in teams at week three. That's the time that everyone has arrived, hopefully. Everyone's late, early dropped, done whatever you need to do. People who are in the course are in for the long haul, and so the team you'll be with will be with you uh, throughout. You have to work with the team you're assigned. It's exactly the same way it'll work for you if you're in a company when you get told to work with this person that you don't really like working with so much, but hey, that's just the way it goes. So it's, it's a preparation, if you like, for that. And this is the schedule of, of putting something together. Your first deliverable will be to provide a topic halfway through the semester on what you want to talk about. Um, the basic idea of this is, and it's most easily shown, this is uh, uh, in, in the syllabus also, I think online, these, these examples are. Um, whoops. And so it's to be able to and examine a fluid mechanics related question that is mysterious, interesting, and if you can imagine such a thing. And so examples of this are this question here, a very simple question. Why is, when you look at older movies, older even than I am, that if you see a ship going through heavy seas and it's a model ship, 
you can tell that it's a model ship. And so here is a little example that you could work into your one page. You have to make a one page PowerPoint slide and present it. So on mute. Anyone seen the Poseidon, Poseidon Adventure? Now's your chance. Jack Alvarez, Pamela Sue Martin, Arthur O'Connor, Eric Shea, and Leslie Nielsen were aboard the SS Poseidon when it was hit by a 90-foot tidal wave and capsized. The Poseidon Adventure and capsized. Real ship or fake ship? Real ship? Fake, fake I think fake. Yeah. Well, why? Yeah, so that's it. So that's, that's, that's the only point I'm making. You don't have to necessarily answer that. Oh my God, have I lost my thing here? Where's, uh, do I do this? That's it, yeah. It doesn't come. So yeah, I think fake ship as well. So here are two hypotheses. So the idea, the scientific method. Uh, you make an observation, you think something about it as to why that might be. You could do an experiment or you could make a hypothesis. Hypothesis would be why this is a fake ship. And I can think of two, maybe more. One could be that you see these beads floating around. Well, the other thing, is that a real tsunami in the middle of the ocean? I guess if it's a fake ship, it probably isn't. But tsunamis in the middle of the ocean might be two or three or four centimeters tall, not 90 feet. They only get big where they run up onto the beach or hit land. So another inconsistency. But one reason why it could be a fake is that your visual cue on the ship is you see, actually, I don't know if I uh, do this. Does it do it? Oh, that's not bad. You probably can't see it so well, but I think you can see water droplets here. And these water droplets, I think, your eye thinks they're big. And so the question would be, how big can a water droplet be? If they're big, and in the movie you perceive them as being big because of the background of this ship, you might realize that we don't have water droplets in the rain that come to be basketball size. And so you could test that to see whether you can, in nature, get basketball uh, size um, raindrops or uh, beads of water. The second is that in traveling relative to this ship, beads of water that you get in, the, in the, the space frame of the ship that you see are traveling could be falling at a different rate than you'd think they'd fall if you see them with a real ship in the background because of the scaling of the ship. Beads of water should fall at the same rate here as they do in a model, as they do in a full life. And so if they're really traveling at the same rate but the background is a very small ship, which you think is a big ship, then they look like they're going really quickly. And so the two hypotheses that you could examine are the ones that are noted here. The first is to figure out what's the biggest droplet you could ever get. And you can show through stuff that we'll do by the end of this week, by Friday, they shouldn't be bigger than five millimeter, quarter of an inch-ish, fifth of an inch, I guess, and two, two tenths of an inch. And so that could be a plausible reason why that's the case. The other one is to calculate how far or how quickly a raindrop should fall both in real life and in the model. And uh, Heuristically or by induction, I think you could prove to yourself that since the raindrop is falling in the same air next to the model as it is next to a real ship, they should be going at the same rate. And so if you see it traveling a much larger apparent distance on the ship because it's scaled in the same amount of time that it should in a much shorter period than it would talk, take to go the full length of the ship, then that is another visual clue. So those are just two small calculations that you could do to make the case that your visual, your eye gets a visual clue of exactly what's going on. There's another one that re relies around a movie of kind of surface tension things, the kinds of things you'll see in high school. A demonstration yeah. perhaps that you've already <laughs> seen is when a glass is completely <laughs> filled with water. Then a cardboard is placed over the glass. It's inverted. And then the hand supporting the cardboard is removed. 
atmospheric pressure causes the car to stay in place. This demonstration can actually mislead you regarding the understanding of the next demonstration. Let's add a little food coloring to this water so that it's more visible. Now let's pour that water I apologize for you guys. We'll get this fixed. into a mason jar with a wire screen lid in place of the normal cap. So the water enters the jar. Once again, we'll fill it to overflowing. We'll place a card on the screen and turn it upside down. But this time, instead of removing my hand, we'll remove the card. The question is, why doesn't the water come out through the screen? Surface tension is the answer to that question. The surface tension of the water around the small holes in the screen. If I'm frightened by how enraptured you all were with that, but, uh, but hey, way to go. Maybe I need to change my style. Or some people would say I have no style. Uh, yeah, let's just have a fun. To, we don't have enough fun in this class just to... We've used this for the last few years. March 2011. Uh, off the east coast of Japan. It, it's an interesting commentary. Makes the case a bit about the tsunami we just made. So, yeah, that's that was the tsunami that was just about to hit. So, it's getting larger because it's getting onshore. It would be uh, smaller further offshore. And uh, let's just finish this. I just think this is a funny one. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächters. Das Gerät und das Überlebensradar. There you go. And who says we have no sense of humor in this class? All right. Um, so, so that's the uh, work for um, uh, the the, the uh, presentations. And so, you know, for these presentations, uh, almost all the class are electing to do them online and submit them on YouTube instead of come to class in the week before Thanksgiving. And so that may be something that you choose to do also. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, the grading policy is there. If you take it seriously, there's no limit to the number of people who can get 100%. Uh, but the, the range of grades would be something between this kind of place here. If you blow it off, you'll be lower than 85 uh, there is a peer review, so people have to contribute where you get to comment on the, uh, the performance of your colleagues uh, as well. And so I think it can be a, a, a quite educational, hold on a sec, we're not going yet, uh, it can be an educational uh, experience for you. And so I encourage you to, uh, to engage with that. And we can speak more about that in due course. Uh, just to finish off this, Again, I will mention again, uh, midterms are in the evenings, finals are in exam week. Uh, the final is work twice as much as the, the midterms. Uh, look at them. The grading scale, okay, that'll catch your attention. Thought it might. The grading scale is as on here, so you have that. It's absolute. And I'll make the point that it's absolute for the reason that you're really being graded out of your final score is going to be about 108 plus 7 percent. So it's going to be out of 115 percent. And so you get, if out of 115 percent, you get 
you get an A. And so it is absolute. So when I get uh, questions, well, I got 93.29 uh, on December the 23rd. My, my answer is the only option you've got is to come back and get your exam regraded to get those extra points because I won't push you over the cusp because you're already being graded out of, you know, 117%. It's 115%. So the grading is absolute. The only curve that exists is um, the, uh, the boost to get the top score in the exam to 110%. The homeworks cut off are firm unless there's a really, 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 really good reason for that not to be. Uh, everything is laid out in the materials that we've talked about online. Um, we do... Uh, conduct ourselves in accordance with Penn State's uh, academic integrity, um, conduct yourself as your parents and you would like to be thought of.